Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good morning, welcome you all to this next class in this course on analytical spectral and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials. Just immediately the, in the previous class we have looked at so examples of inorganic systems for the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy where the, the oxides, sulfides, etc. as the oxidation state of the metal center increases, the uh, binding energy of the corresponding orbital also increases. Now, having looked at organic, having looked at the inorganic compounds, we can look at the composites and uh, please let us look at this. Uh, draw your attention to this particular slide, uh, the XPES of uh, the carbon or uh, the graphene oxide. So, let us look at this, the carbon one is XPES of graphene, graphene oxide. The graphene, graphene oxide is one of the common, the material that is used in the, in the composite area because you can mix with a lot of things, you can modify with a lot of things, therefore you can modify the properties, therefore you can use for a different kind of a purposes. So, what is the most common you would see? Uh, draw your attention to this particular slide and this slide here you can see C1 is spectrum of the graphene and pure graphene means there is nothing, no oxide should be there, but you will never get that. So, you have this uh, even a little bit of carbon, see carbonyl kind of a carbon and other things, mm, primarily sp2 carbon that is what you would see. Now, if you say graphene oxide, please uh, look at this uh, the right side panel in the same slide um, uh, showing using this cursor uh, here. So, what you are able to see from the spectrum when you deconvolute, so you could see different regions, the, the, the pinkish, the violet, the green and the, uh, the, the blue all these kinds of things and these are referring to an sp2 type of a carbon and an sp3 type of a carbon, the CO kind of a carbon, C double bond O carbon, maybe C with the two oxygens etc. So, many things are there you can see on this. Why? Because this the pure graphene which is otherwise only sp2 carbon is being now modified, being now oxidized to different levels and therefore, the your sp2 is reduced, the sp3 is increased because you are uh, you know saturating that then adding oxygens of one a single bonded, adding oxygens of double bonded, adding oxygens with uh, two or more etcetera oxidized. So, that is what is called graphene oxide and most commonly used is the graphene oxide and then people use something called reduced graphene oxide. When you reduce ideally speaking you should, should go back to graphene, but that is not. So, these are some level of oxidation is reduced that is what you will see. Yeah, here itself we have that example. So, if you look at uh, one of the graphene oxide uh, which is synthesized in some particular way, the spectrum is shown on the left uh, top panel in this particular uh, slide, uh, draw your attention to that. If you look at these values 280 to 290, you can easily say it is a carbon 1 aspect XPA spectrum. You do not need to uh, cross check anything because that is known. Now, your spectrum is more broad envelope. Now, if you deconvolute, you get one peak here another peak here, another peak here, another. There is a combination of all these four and if you add all these areas removing the overlap, you will get the total area of that. So, that is not a uh, problem. So, that is how it is being deconvoluted. So, you get with the carbon with the carbon uh, bond which is around 284 range, carbon with one oxygen around 286 range, carbon with a double bond oxygen 287 range, carbon with a dioxygen around 289 to 90 range. You can see that very clearly. Uh, please focus on the slide. Uh, so, you can see the CC, the CO, the C double bond O, the CO2 type of species. It does not mean carbon dioxide, this is the carboxylate, carboxylic esters, all those kinds. Now, this is the graphene oxide in general what is made. Now, I reduce a bit of this, that means oxidized species are being reduced 
and the oxygen will be content will be reduced. Now you can see the C uh, with the two O's, which is so strong here, became very weak here. C with one O is somewhat a little less, and C with one O, the double bond O and one O and C C. So this is the maximum. So this is in between this pure graphene versus the graphene oxide. This is in between. Okay. So this is in most of these things you will find uh, uh, graphene. Uh, you will never get hundred percent kind of a graphene. Uh, then. Uh, the reduced graphene oxide, uh, okay, this is RGO, the graphene, and this is graphene oxide. Uh, GOX, something like that. So, reduced GOX, GO. So, this is the graphene primarily. Sp2, then you will have the Sp2 followed by a few other things with the CO, C double bond O, C O with O. This is less, much less, and this is may, uh, the Sp2 carbon is least, and uh, the CO, C double bond O, CO2 are the maximum. So this is uh, so these are the two regions of this people use, and again it is subjected to what level of oxidation, what level of uh, reduction you have done. So therefore, one needs to see that uh, for always. Okay, so here uh, a set of spectra in the lower panel. Uh, there are four spectra there: A, B, C, and D. I draw your attention to that. This is simple graphene oxide where you have. The CC, the COH, COO, COC, CO, and COOH type, different extents that you can see. The, of course, the SP2CC is somewhat less as usual. Now, you put some water vapor on that. So, if you put on the water vapor on that, you will start seeing this uh, particular uh, thing at the carbon CC. So, what uh, the higher, and then you have very little um, uh, changes are there in the in the OH containing kind of a things uh, etc and then CO. Now, if you put if you leave that in the air that aerial oxidation what will happen? These sides will increase and that is what you see. When these increases these two peaks start getting merged. So, is the, you see the start. So, you increase the, the C oxidized portion. So, the COH and COC, CO all these things. Instead, you put styrene. Styrene is a uh, is an organic uh, polymer. So, therefore, you would see you wouldn't see oxidized products. Oxidized products are reduced. But all you will see is the sp3 carbon, CH, and then CC, and that's where it is coming from, and that is how it is. So that means what this tells you is this A, B, C, D. These four spectra together. When you look at what it tells is, you can modify. You can play with the with the surface of this particular composite which you the graphene oxide or reduced graphene oxide and make different kinds of surfaces that you would require in that and those may be useful for a different kind of a catalysis. I again redraw your attention to the slide here to see in general uh, the, the C with the O double O C O O type C double bond O C O C type and C C type etc. You have already seen the binding energy of the CC will be the lower side and binding energy of CO2 will be the higher side. Now, you can also look at within the SP2 CC, you can look at and SP2 CC versus SP3 CC also you can differentiate. The SP3 CC is coming little bit in the lower side and SP2 CC comes a little bit in the higher side. So, depending upon the ratio of the SP2 SP3 that this peak will shift on this. So, these are all coming from the sp3, these are all coming from the sp2. So, if you have a mixture in many polymers, there are some unsaturation where the double bonds. So, you can make out how much of the double bonded you know unsaturation is present. So, unsaturation in the polymers. So, this is another. Uh, 
So, this is a technique where you can uh, use that. Okay, let us move on to another slide the XPS of graphene oxide and a nano uh, composite. So, what is the nano composite made? Graphene oxide, uh, whatever the way it is made, it is written over here, and then you treat with the copper chloride and then you make the copper oxide graphene oxide composite. So, this is for the copper, this is for the graphene oxide and the graphene oxide composite with the copper. Now, again I draw your attention to this slide and you can see this is the spectrum A is the survey spectrum of the simple graphene oxide. So, carbon centers, oxygen centers etcetera. Now, if you look at the high resolution in the carbon region alone, you can see a maximum sp2 then C with the OH, C with the COC, C OH. So, you can see the uh, nice graphene oxide kind of a situation. Now, if you look at the composite between the graphene oxide and the copper oxide graphene. So, if you look at the survey spectrum, carbon should be there, oxygen should be there, then copper should also be there and that is what you see. Now, if you look at the carbon region of this particular composite, this composite carbon region, you can see again these differently ones. Then if you look at the copper region, the copper region of this composite, the composite has got uh, the graphene oxide as well as the copper oxide. So, therefore, you need to look at the copper region and as well as the carbon region. So, this is the carbon region which tells about the graphene uh, status, graphene oxide status and the copper spectrum will tell you the status of the copper and the copper present in 2 plus 1 plus, present in 2 plus 1 plus. So, using these peaks and the satellite peaks, you can even estimate what level of copper 1 plus, what level of copper 0, what level of copper 2 plus. So, all of these can be. So, now this composite, suppose if it is used for some uh, the catalytic purposes, then you can discuss how these composites are working. Now, I hope that is understandable. So, you can study the surface of these composites by using both the, the metal based XPS as well as the carbon based. XPS. Now, having looked at the inorganic, then followed by the, uh, the graphene composites, etcetera. Now, let us look into the catalysis. So, obviously, these are all heterogeneous catalysis, and uh, then in the heterogeneous catalysis, you will have compositions different, temperature difference, pressure difference, ratio of the input uh, materials differ, the state, the all these things differ. So, therefore, your catalysis can be discussed and debated based on the surface character of that. And I, with the beginning itself, I talked to you that uh, this technique is a surface technique. So, we can see as the reaction progresses, what is happening to the surface? The surface is still active, some uh, semi active or semi inactive or completely passive, all of those by observing the species are formed. So, one of the uh, application I have shown here is, you can see the surface depth by analyzing the electron that is coming down, XPS electron. Now, what is differing here? Only the kinetic energy, uh, not kinetic energy, only the energy of the X radiation that you are using. So, that is uh, the 350, uh, 600, uh, 1000 kinetic energy of the electron when you use different levels of X ray energies. Okay? So, therefore, you have the K E kinetic energy 175, 350, 600 and so that means, they can come from bottom, they can from come from depth. So, they can travel longer depths. So, please now look at the uh, this slide, I am showing you there are 4 spectra shown here with 175 kinetic 350, 600, 1000. Both there the gold surface you are looking at, the gold spectrum of the 4 f and the oxygen spectrum of 1 s, both of them are given here. So, by looking at this particular, these two spectra, you can talk about the ratio of this gold uh, peaks of the 4 f 7 over 2 and the gold 0 and then you can get the depth of this one. Okay. What is the concept here? The, as the longer the distance that this electron travels, uh, obviously its energy uh, gets attenuated, dampened. So, the, that means intensity of such kind of electrons will number will reduce. So, therefore, that is the I with the D is equal to I uh, 0 into E power minus distance by the, the lambda and this is the, the lambda is the mean free path. So, mean free path is uh, 
is the distance of an electron beam that can travel before its intensity becomes 1 by e of it because it is exponential thing. So, 1 by e comes. So, from this now you make you look at the top right panel this i m f p that is the mean free path versus the, the ratio of these uh, particular a u uh, peaks that you can see these uh, things from here you can get the profiling of that you can see the depth. So, whether you are seeing just top one this is a bit lower layer. So, this can be identified from that kind of a thing. So, the kinetic energies will get dampened. So, that is from there you can look at that. So, greater the depth the greater the dampening of this. Let us look at some examples of catalysis heterogeneous obviously. So, uh, here I again draw your attention to the slide CO oxidation on a platinum 100 catalyst at ambient pressures and at CO to O2 ratio of 1 is to 1, 1 is to 1, 2 1 and 1 is to 4. So, that means high levels of oxygen content uh, here and lower level of oxygen contents here. So, how do that affect your spectra etcetera and uh, this is you have the spectrum at the O 1 s is the spectrum of the palladium. Please look at the slide please carbon 1 s spectrum. So, you can see all the three spectra at different temperature going from 130 in this uh, heterogeneous catalysis this is called low temperature though it is a higher 130 for us, but it is a low temperature and then you go up to 435 130 to 430 almost 300 degree Celsius you increase by stepwise and measure the spectrum at each keeping certain things constant one is one is to one mixture as well as the pressure constant but temperature is different. Similar spectra were done even at the 1 is to 4 not shown in this particular slide and then we will look at this. Now, if you look at all these you can see that the spectra between 130 and 430 degree Celsius these are all done at 500 milli torr at a ratio of O 2 to C O as 1 is to 1. So, at the lower temperatures what will happen the surface. So, that means this one kind of thing this is you have C O peak is here is a quite big. As you increase the temperature the C O peak is not seen. What is seen is the, the C O the C O free peak uh, or the C O 2 peak as you increase. So, that means the C O converts into the C O 2 kind of a thing. You can have both a free C O as well as adsorbed C O free C O 2 as well as adsorbed C O 2. In some cases you will be able to separate these uh, things some cases you may not be able to. So, as you can see from the spectrum of the carbon as you increase the temperature from 130 to higher around around 300 or beyond the transition takes place from this 300 to 330 is going. So, that is where actually the your, your reaction could start taking place between the CO and O2 because that you are making the CO2 of that. You can see the same thing from the palladium spectrum. So, the palladium 3 D so, you have the bulk kind of a palladium ok and the palladium which is in the in the surface being reacted. So, you can see the left side uh, amount is increasing in that ok. So, that is being utilized that is being made use of that. So, that is the surface is uh, it is reacting with uh, various components of that. You can also look at the oxygen spectrum. So, can tell you oxygen present with the O2. O2 with the free, O2 with the adsorbed, CO2 and CO. So, O present in CO, all of those things. Was oxygen present in the metal surface. So, all of these, you can see all these as a higher temperature, these are all got utilized because the product is formed. On the right side is being completely, these are formed, that means your reaction products have started forming. And then later on, you will separate it out. At low temperatures, you do not have anything on this. So, the palladium based ones and uh, these ones become more of a oxygen adsorbed and that means oxygen adsorbed species or chemisorbed species these are more active species before the reaction takes place. And this was predicted in the past from based on some other spectroscopy, but for example, like vibrational, but here they have been proven that these are the really the species which are. So, now what you are looking at? You are looking at the surface by measuring the carbon 1 s O 1 s palladium 3 d spectra at each given temperature and other uh, parameters are being kept constant. 
from that what you are getting? You are trying to see how the CO is getting converted, the oxo species, adsorbed oxo species, all of these, what are the active species, how the, to the product formation, at what temperatures, the product more and more product formation, etc. Then we also, the same kind of a reaction set is done at 1 is to 4, that means that starting with a higher ratio of oxygen pressure. So, content, not pressure, content. So, indicated the uh, formation of oxidative overlayers and a decrease in the activation. So, when you have a higher and higher amounts of oxygen is available, that uh, the temperature at which the reaction takes place will also get little lowered. So, that is how they do a lot of optimization and find out the conditions of that. Okay, and uh, let us look at uh, another example. This example is uh, for the methanol oxidation on a copper 100 surface. You have two panels and the lower panel, kindly look at the, spec, uh, the spectrum on the slide please and the upper panel. Upper panel you have the oxygen at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 tor with that. So, the ratio of the pressures uh, changing. Uh, here uh, there is no oxygen present in that. Okay. So, this is let us see carbon uh, you have the both the carbon 1 spectra and the O1 spectra on uh, the, the copper 100 at 298. Here the temperature is not varied, temperature is kept constant. Uh, the gas phase methanol it is only just the methanol lower panels and the methanol mixed with the oxygen is the higher panel. So, this is methanol plus oxygen, this is just simple methanol, there is no oxygen there. So, that is where compared. So, this XPA spectra was checked and compared. The absorbed and the gas phase species are indicated in so the alpha, the beta, the gamma, the chi, etcetera. So, the alpha, beta, gamma, chi. So, the alpha is the CH2O gas, CH2O gas phase, and beta is CH3OH gas phase, and the gamma is CHOO metal bound species, and the delta is our epsilon is CH3O bound metal. So, the metal bound species and the gaseous species. So, you can see those things the gaseous species and the metal bound species are varying in these ones. So, the oxygen spectrum you can see they are obviously increasing. So, they are obviously increasing in this that means, the reaction is happening on the surface of it. And those are not as much when you do not have the oxygen in this. So, you need to compare this spectra. For example, here these are there only when you add the oxygen because only when you add the oxygen, this oxygen bound kind of a species will develop. So, whatever the gaseous oxygen or bound oxygen all of these and here you do not have. So, similarly here also, so you can see overall the spectrum is moving towards this direction. So, that means the bound level of species and they are activated on the surface. So, the activated gaseous molecules the adsorbed gaseous molecules to the metal, they are the pre step to the catalysis and they are the precursors for the catalysis. So, you can find out all of these. Let us move to the example here, the methanol oxidation and copper catalyst and this is looking at the depth. So, a top a little lower, a little lower. How do you do that? By using different levels of kinetic energies of the electrons, that means different levels of x-ray energy. Here, what do you have? the methanol oxidation and copper catalyst few millibar methanol that means pressure is kept constant they are different ratios of the catalyst versus methanol so catalyst 6 methanol 1 catalyst 3 methanol 1 catalyst 1 methanol that means catalyst concentration is decreasing the methanol concentration is increasing as you go from bottom to top on the spectrum please look at this at the spectrum so as you go from bottom to top your catalyst ratio is decreasing and your methanol ratio is increasing. So, you can see different types for example, the methanol gaseous, CH2O gaseous and the oxygen gaseous, CO2 gaseous all these species. So, the species have formed at a high at the greater the things the greater these concentrations that means greater the catalysis at that. So, the catalysis increases uh, in these things, but at certain stages the, the surface will also get passivated. You can see the oxygen species a lot on the surface of it. The passivation things can be probed as you show on the right side panel by using different levels of x radiation. Okay. 
So the lower, the higher, the higher the energy. So you can see surface oxygen level versus the subsurface oxygen level, and the ratio of these two, if you plot on the y-axis, and that will give the the distance. That will give the mean free path. That will give the depth of the thing. From this, you can get the depth up to what the species is good, uh, up to what the species is passivated, and this. Therefore, the catalyst needs to be changed or catalyst needs to be regenerated before you go for these ones. So, these are different kinds of uh, examples that I have uh, picked up and given to you. Please have a look at all these and uh, go through so that it becomes easier for you. Now, let us uh, look at as I have always been closing the uh, any topic by giving you some the knowledge enhancement practice sessions to say is true even in this topic. So, we are in the topic uh, 10 in this particular course. So, that is where it shows the key 10. Now, let us look at. So, for this what you need using the literature binding energy ranges okay, which were also given in my slides. So, work out the following XPA spectrum. Now, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid EDTA draw a survey spectrum means all the things that are there plus the impurities will also show. Here we do not know what impurities. So, we do not need to mention about the impurities. So, in the ethylene diamine what do you have? The carbon is there, the higher, the nitrogen is there, the oxygen is there. These are the mainly. So, the roughly towards that uh, ratio. So, you can look at the ratio and you can make the plot. Now, predict the C1S spectrum that means you take the, the only the C1S part of it and then predict depending upon what kind of a different types of carbons are present, what different types of carbons are present. The carbon which is attached to the CH2, okay, N, CH2, then another CH2, then COH. The carbon attached to the COO group, the carbon attached to the directly to the O groups. So, there are at least three different kinds of things are there. So, you will get the peaks accordingly and you can use. Assume that all four COOH groups of EDTA were reduced to CHO groups, then predict. Again, you predict the spectrum, draw the spectrum. So, the COOH has got double bond O and O, that will be greater binding energy. See, in the aldehyde, only one double bond O, the binding energy will decrease. Okay, and another fourth one, instead of COOH going to CHO, you can make CH2OH alcohol, then it will be further different. So, your spectrum will condense, reduce the width wise. So, please show that, uh, do that, overlay all the spectra for all of this and talk about. So, what are the commonalities? What are the differences that you noticed and why? That also you have to. I hope you understood. Come to the example 2, given the neutral octahedral 1 is to 1. Neutral, no charge on the spec. Octahedral, 6 coordination, 1 is to 1. Metal to ligand is 1 is to 1. So, all the 3 parameters will tell you clearly that M E D T A. M is zinc, manganese 2 plus, iron 2 plus, cobalt 2 plus, nickel 2 plus, copper, zinc. Predict the C1S XPS in any one of the compound, that is ok, enough. Then predict the metal 2P spectra for each of the case, ok, because their ranges are different as you have seen already. Then compare N1S XPS spectra of simple EDTA with that of the metal, because when you bind to the metal, obviously N1S the binding energies will change, ok. So, you can compare all that. Then go to the question 3, when complex is given under 2, who burnt in air, all those compounds like manganese EDTA, iron EDTA, cobalt EDTA, etc. Et and each of those resulted in burnt in air means there is both oxygen is also available. Each of those resulted in oxide mixtures, that means you get manganese oxide of different valence states, iron oxide different valence states, cobalt oxide different valence states, that means multiple oxidation states. Taking each case separately, predict the metal XP, already I have already shown in my slides the metal oxide spectra. If some few are not shown, you can get from the internet literature. You know, assume that the presence of oxides of all the possible oxidation states are there. So, then you draw your spectra compare with that. Okay. So, I hope, so if you can do this only then you will, you will be able to judge whether you understood this spectroscopy or not. So, mainly application part of it. Okay. So, in the next uh, uh, classes, we will start with a new topic probably on the Mosboy spectroscopy uh, or so, which is very highly useful for the inorganic and as well as for the uh, nanomaterials. Thank you very much.